Coming up on New York City Sports Tonight, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings, the Yankees were in Motown trying to go up on the Tigers in their best of five American League Divisional Series. NFL Week 4 with the Giants hoping to pull off another late miracle in the desert over the Cardinals. In Baltimore, the Jets and Mark Sanchez felt that Raven defense really bring the pain. Game of the Week with Sheepshead Bay's bruiser Ricardo Appleton taking it right at Flushing. And a streetball bragging rights battle with high-flying NBA stars going at it. Kemba Walker with the Entertainment Basketball Classic hosting the Goodman League out of D.C. next on NYC Sports Tonight. Hi everybody, I'm Joby Smith. Welcome to Buffalo Wild Wings in downtown Atlantic Center Bowl in Brooklyn, New York. Deval Ellis along with me, NFL Week 4, Yankees, Giants, and Jets on the road. Yeah, I mean, it just feels good even though all these teams are on the road to have all these home teams in playoff contention or possibly to win the Super Bowl. That's right, Deval. Yankees playing the next two games of the ALDS in Detroit. We'll love to come back home to the Bronx ready for the league championship series. Let's take it out to Comerica Park. Tigers ace pitcher Justin Verlander striking out 11 batters over eight tough innings. That helped Detroit take a two games to one lead over the Yankees with that 5-4 victory. Game four is Tuesday night and Joe Girardi's troops will have to answer the call. Now Eli Manning and the Giants found magic again out in Glendale, Arizona. Remember, that's where they pulled off that miracle Super Bowl win over the Patriots back in 2008. Manning was the MVP in that game. Cardinals were up by three with 3.37 left in the game when Eli hit Jake Ballard, capping a seven-play, 80-yard drive. Then it was a three-point game and more blessings came with 2.51 to go. Victor Cruz thought to have fumbled, but because he gave himself up as a receiver, Arizona could not challenge the play. Then on the very next snap, Eli connected with Hakeem Nix from 29 yards out. The Giants improved to three and one on this season and our Buffalo Wild Wings player of the week is Giants QB, Eli Manning, who threw for 321 yards and two TDs. Now the other New York QB, Mark Sanchez, had a very tough night in Baltimore. Ladarius Webb's 73 yard interception return in the third quarter put the game away as the Jets drop to two and two. And of all, Sanchez had a real rough going down there in Baltimore. Yeah, I think people don't understand what it's like to be a quarterback. You're playing from behind, so, you know, you're playing a team in the Baltimore Ravens that has the ability to blitz, and they know you're going to pass the ball, so they can pretty much pin their ears back and just bring pressure consistently. It's tough for a young quarterback, especially a young quarterback who doesn't have a successful run game, who can't depend on backs out of the backfield to help with the blitz. So, I mean, it wasn't all Sanchez's fault, but he really looked bad. When we come back, the game of the week with Flushing and Chiefs at Bay, Plus, we'll talk about the current lockout situation with the NBA players battling out in Brooklyn. Down by seven. Final play for the only thing that would make this any better is overtime. They'll need a miracle to win this football game. Harris slot right, drops back. Hines takes the pass at the 30. With the seam! Wow! Can you believe it? Hello, Wild Wings. You have to be here. Field goal for the win. And welcome back to downtown Brooklyn, New York at Buffalo Wild Wings. Joby Smith along with Deval Ellis. Talking game of the week now. Sheepshead Bay taking on Flushing. Yeah, I mean, Sheepshead Bay, what can you say about this program? Kind of down a couple of years, but a program I'm particularly close to because one of the great Sheepshead Bay Sharks <laughs> happens to be my brother, Brian Ellis. But I've watched this program from, from a high school player to a college player, and they've had great players come out of this program consistently. Nobody runs the Delaware wing team better than she said Bay, they always have fast guys and they have a great track program. So this team is always powerful. Every year, year in and year out, they're always a team that can always make things happen, especially in the run game. You talk about power. Let's take it out to Sheepshead Bay for all the highlights of that game where Flushing had a tough time controlling the great fullback, Ricardo Appleton. The Sharks offensive line kept blowing holes open for Appleton, who rushed 12 times for 170 yards and two TDs. Flushing completely dominated by Sheepshead Bay at the line of scrimmage, and Appleton was glad to take home the game over MVP trophy. Back at Buffalo Wild Wings, Deval Ellis caught up with some hungry Sharks and talked about a team considered dangerous in the PSAL. I'm about to interrupt this, uh, this little dinner session here and ask the guys from Sheepshead Bay how they feel about the madman picking a Queens team over a Brooklyn team. Hey fellas, 
How y'all feel about the madman picking flushing over Sheep's Head Bay? You can't beat the Bay. You can't beat the Bay. Now stay with us when we come back. A chat with Entertainers Basketball Classic CEO Greg Marius. Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. Hi everybody, I'm Joby Smith with NBA players amping up the crowd and putting on a show here at LIU in Brooklyn, USA. Goodman did not waste any time out of the gate. Memphis Grizzlies, Sam Young, stayed above the rim and scored a team-high 28 points. His teammate, Michael Beasley, of the Minnesota Timberwolves, kept the pressure on both ends of the floor and had fun finishing with 19. Now, for, for the most part, I still for the fans. You know, um, everybody knows the lot that's going on right now. And, you know, the basketball, the basketball doesn't stop. Never, ever stop, you know, so we just give them the fans the shit they need to hold them on. Everybody excited to see former UConn star Kemba Walker leading EBC in the homecoming game. Kemba dropped 30, leading all scorers, and I spoke with him about pursuing his NBA dreams. How special was it to be the ninth overall pick in the NBA draft? It was very special to me. Uh, I didn't have any expectations on you know, where I was going, so you know, I'm, I'm definitely pleased where I'm at. It's a coming home of sorts, and despite the lockout, you get to play with some good NBA players tonight. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, it's always fun to come home and play against in front of the hometown, the hometown crowd. And, you know, it, it, it makes it even more special to play with a bunch of other pros. Kemba's fellow New Yorker and Denver Nugget Gary Forbes pumped in 20 for EBC and represents all folks battling diabetes. Looking ahead, um, I just wanted to talk to you about that big walk coming up. Is that important to you here in New York? Uh, definitely, um, especially being in New York and you know, being the fact that I have diabetes and you know, walking for a cause trying to you know, end this uh, disease and, and raise a lot of money and hopefully a lot of people turn up. Despite all the great energy and showmanship by the NBA players and street ballers, the lingering question was how the lockout is affecting mental and physical preparation while the league canceled the entire preseason schedule. Nothing. I'm just going to keep working on it. Well, depending on how long we go, uh, I'm going to have to you know, start, start considering you know, some other options. Uh, so, uh, I hope you can start it. Continue to work out playing games like this. I know we got a game coming up in LA. Mm -hmm. um, myself and, and, and Mike and, and, and KD going out there to play. So uh, against the against the Julie, mm -hmm. so it should be fun. If the lockout continues, that's a lot of a, a lot of time I get with my kids. Other than that, you know, we just, just, just keep the ball rolling, keep working out every day, keep trying to play the hoop. And we're back at Buffalo Wild Wings in downtown Brooklyn's Atlantic Terminal Mall. And with me is Greg Marius, the director of Entertainers Basketball Classic, along with Davalos. And Greg, that was a great event you guys had at LIU. All these NBA guys showed up. And boy, there were a lot of people in attendance. Thank you, thank you. I mean, I'm glad that LIU actually had us there. But we went to a couple of other schools. They, they turned it down, and LIU was a great choice. So I've done something there before with the VH1 Awards and... and I was at home. Speaking of at home, man, a lot of the players are from New York. Campbell Walker, obviously from the Bronx, Gary Forbes, the Brooklyn Knights, and they said they love playing in front of the hometown crowd. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I just really got to know Gary. He did a great, you know, great thing out there, and, you know, of course, we know Kimba. We had Kimba since he was um, 10 years old, so the easy path. <laughs> I just wanted to know, you know, with the street ball becoming such a worldwide phenomenon, do you feel that Brooklyn and New York City is still a mecca of basketball? I mean, I, I think it kind of fell a little bit because there's so many... I, I judge it by the fact of the guys that make it to the league, and it's not that many New Yorkers in the league, and it's not because New York doesn't play well, but it's just that the other states, they, they concentrate on, on more of the fundamentals and, and, and those types of things. With New York, is, we, don't, we don't perfect our jump shot, and you got to have a jump shot in the league. So if more guys, if you notice, know, that's what Kimber did. Kimber, I'm glad he, he really stepped up his game during last season before he went to UConn for seniors, well, not even his junior season, and, and he showed before he even got to the draft where that's the first thing they do to a New York guard. Does he have a jump shot? Does he have a jump shot? Kimber proved it through the whole season with UConn, so he's already was ahead of his game, and that's, that's, that's always been our problem. We haven't had any real guards that had jump shots other than like a, a, a step off 
Sean Marbury or uh, 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 Rod Strickland. Before that, the Sham Guards and guys like that, that's why they don't last in the league. Right. So. But when you talk about some of the guys that showed up for this event, Michael Beasley really put on the show, and there were some high flyers out there. Michael Beasley, <laughs> that boy, I'm, you know he was a number two draft choice. Right, right, right. And he definitely could be that dude. He really can play. He's a great guy on the, on the court and off the court. Ball wise, we got it. And coming off his rookie season in Denver, Gary Forbes, he really put on a show out there. And I love Gary because what he stands for on and off the court, especially with the fact that he's the spokesperson for the American Diabetes Association, and he's rallying the kids to take care of themselves. I went to his camp over there at Benjamin Banneker Academy this summer, right, and he's right. a great guy. I mean, I just found out today that he, he's actually doing a walk on the 29th. But oh, we're wow. trying to, Philly wants to play us, and that's the day. And they were like, Greg, you need to change the date. I'm like, wow. And they was like, because Gary's doing a walk right. that Take day. And they said, I said, how many miles? They said, six. I said, he's a ball player. <laughs> he can walk six miles and play a game after that. So, <laughs> And talk about the ball players that are in the current NBA lockout situation. Some of those guys did talk about that. It was limited, but they did express their concerns over where they are at today with the league. And how does that impact what you're doing? I mean, well, right now, the lockout is, is if you realize one thing about the lockout, a lot of the leagues that actually got these guys, like the Drew League, the Goodman League, they, they got these guys because of the lockout. With us, I already had all of them. Like, I had the Kobe's and, and the Durant's and all of that way before there ever was a lockout because we are sanctioned by the NBA. And before we were sanctioned by the NBA, the guys were still coming up there and play. So it really didn't do anything for me. It's really helping the other leagues. And, and, and I've gotten closer to the other leagues because of it. Because what I'm trying to, to, to express to them is learn how to take this situation and make it work for you now because once it's gone, it's gone. These guys ain't going to come back. Most of them are not going to come back and play again. So how do you take it from here and, and, and you know, make it work for you? So that's what I'm talking to them about because I try to do that with the, the tournaments that's here in New York. I try to give them a little bit of information, and they always feel that, why is Greg helping us? But they don't understand, when I help bring your ball, it helps bring my ball. I'm already at a certain level when it comes to sponsorship and, and credibility in this world, where I, I don't, if I allow you, all those other tournaments to just take anything from sponsors, then eventually what happens is sponsors start saying, I can have 10 little tournaments, and we, can, we don't even need you anymore. So if I show them how to get to the level that I'm at, or even halfway there, at least it, it helps keep the tradition of what we've been doing. So, yeah, I do have a purpose for helping, but it's a, it's a purpose that's going to keep us all around. Is, and that, is it hard for them to buy into your business model? I mean, of is course, it because, hard for them to do that? Because most of them don't really need the financial stru structure that I have because I'm, I'm at a, a higher level with doing things. So when, when they don't really need anything. Most of them just need uniforms and right, so right. simple stuff. So it's easy for a sponsor to come to them and say, hey, I'm going to give you some free product. With me, I, I can't pay my staff with free product. Right. Right. And, and, and I employ a lot of people during the summertime. So even if I, I was able to just take uniforms, I wouldn't because that means now I'm putting somebody out of a job in the summertime. Right, right, right. You know, so, and, and most of the guys that run tournaments, they, go, they, they come from a nine to five and come to their second job. With me, this is my job. This has been my job for the last 30 years. In those 30 years, I might have had two jobs. And that was in the first five years. After that, this has been my job. Well, hats off to you, man. That's a hard job in itself, pulling guys together year after year and being successful the way you have. Thank and I hope we have more leaders like you in the future, especially with all the young guys coming up through the ranks. Well, I, I, I'm going back to, you know, one thing I learned about life is you gotta, you gotta look at where you come. And a lot of times it's a circle. So the things I used to do, I stopped doing. Now I'm doing it again. So I'm getting my relationships back with the players. I'm getting my relationships. I always had a relationship with a lot of things, but I'm going back to that those relationships stronger. So I'm not focusing on like the sponsors like I used to. I'm letting someone else do that. I want to get to know the players, the fans, the spectators. 
So then I, I want to have one on one with them. So that's what I'm working on right now. All right. I just want to say, as a, as a former pro athlete myself, I played in the National Football League. Even when I was there, they said, you, they play football in Brooklyn? <laughs> I thought they played basketball. I just, I'm proud that there's someone here that can just lead you know, our young men and show them how to do things the proper way. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and Greg Marius entertained his basketball classic for the last 30 years, holding it down and putting on great event after great event, and we were glad to have him on the show. Thank you, and I'm glad you, you picked this location. <laughs> I love the Wild, love the wild, wild Wings, yeah, right? Yeah, get, get your <laughs> wings, Greg. <laughs>